To recall the story, Tan describes her love for language and the different forms of English that she used in her everyday life. She describes the proper English that she learned in school and the broken English she grew up with, which is the only English that her mother knows. While her English is limited, Tan's mother is still a very intelligent woman. She reads the Forbes Report, listens to Wall Street Weekly, and reads Shirley MacLaine books with these, all things that most Americans have trouble understanding. While Amy has good control of her separate Englishes, many of her friends say they can understand very little of what her mother says. Tan takes offense when people suggest that her mother speaks a broken, fractured, or limited English. She takes it as if they were saying everything about her mother was limited, including people's perception of her intelligence. Tan even admits, as a child, she was ashamed of her mother's English. She believed, like many others, that the quality of her English reflected of what she had to say. Tan's mother was even mistreated by hospitals when she was seeking answers to life-altering questions about her health. This story strongly points out cultural racism without ever showing any anger or specifically pointing out racism. Amy makes the reader realize how not being American can affect how well you can handle everyday situations. The fact that the story was written by an immigrant and provides real life stories about her mom and herself struggling in America makes this story a wonderful eye opener. It's an eye opener for all of those who sometimes have had an encounter with somebody that does not speak well English and end up judging them. This is a common mistake that even ones with immigrant parents make. We often make assumptions on people's ability to interact in society. This next clip shows how Tan became fluent in both English and Chinese growing up in America. Joy and a sudden tragedy and loss and you feel it and you come out of that and you say, that was me, that was my life. My parents spoke Chinese, and in the home, they spoke Mandarin together. My parents didn't force me to speak Chinese because they thought erroneously that if I learned Chinese, it would affect my ability to learn English. I heard my mother speaking Mandarin to me. Yeah, she's always, you know, saying these terrible things to me, like, you know, go to bed. Um, but she used to sit around a table with friends, and they would be preparing food, you know, they'd be shelling um, these faba beans, or they would be um, chopping vegetables or gutting fish, and they had a newspaper spread out over the table. And they were also talking, they were talking about the old days. And I think that what happened was that I absorbed some of these stories, that I, I somehow knew things um, in an un... This next clip describes the imagery that Tan's mother spoke with and how she influenced Tan's writing. I have imagery in English and I have imagery in Chinese and sometimes they meld and sometimes they don't. I hear my mother saying things to this day and maybe they were not the things that she actually said but I can think of the way she would have said it, the imagery she would have used. It's not these pat phrases it's the way she saw things. She used metaphors a lot. And that is, um, I think, one of the most important parts of a writer's imagination. You make these associations, and they're experiential. They're visual. They're sensorial. They're, um, they're everything. They're, they're emotional. They are your meaning in life, you, you connect meaning to metaphors. Starting at the age of 12, my mother and I seemed to have a lot of disagreements. And I think it was typical because I wanted to be independent. I didn't want to listen to everything my mother said because that was like being my mother. And I was my own person. 
um, she would tell me these same warnings as an adult. She, she would look over my shoulder and she'd say, oh, Amy, you work so hard, squeeze all your brain out onto this paper. You know, and it's a horrible image, you know, but, but th that's how she would say things, very visceral.